When you get your fabric off the bolt and it's a knit fabric, usually you will have the selvages already lined up or at least close to each other along one side. And a trick that I always do in uh, making clothing and using knit fabric is instead of lining up the selvages and uh, lining my pattern piece over here on the fold, because the fabric is so wide um, and typically your pattern pieces are gonna be narrow, what you do is you're gonna open up your fabric and you're gonna bring the selvage in towards the center. So basically you're folding it in thirds really. So you'll just take one edge. This is to cut out your headband. You'll fold one edge in towards the center. And you wanna make sure that your grain line is in line. So you don't wanna like pull it down. You want it to be going straight across. So my grain line is running directly across here. And you only need to fold over as wide as you need it for your pattern piece that you're using. Once you have your fabric laid out with the fold right over here, you're going to take your pattern piece from class that you've cut out. And it has one side that says fold. So what you always wanna do whenever you see that fold on any pattern is you are going to place the pattern on the fold and then when you cut around it, you're only gonna cut on three sides. You will not cut right here and it's gonna make double the size. So a lot of times on a shirt, the bodice is going to have one piece with the center front, so it's cut on the fold. And then when you cut it out around the sides, then you open it up and you have the full front of the shirt instead of just half. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna lay this out on the fabric on the fold. You can either use pattern weights or get pins to hold your pattern pieces in place. And like if I were home doing this, I would probably just cut this on a cutting table. But because we're here at school, you guys need to get experience with laying patterns out this way, okay? So we're gonna lay it out, pattern piece laid out there, and then you're just gonna take your shears and you will trim around. You wanna stand up over the uh, pattern whenever you're cutting. So instead of sitting down and holding it up, we're gonna lay it flat against the table and we will go underneath with the shears and trim out right next to the pattern piece. Be careful not to cut the pattern piece with your shears because these are fabric shears only, no paper. So we'll just trim out next to it. And this is just the basics of how to do the process of laying out a pattern. You'll have a lot more specifics when you make your other projects later in class but this is what you'll need to do exactly for your uh, headband piece. Oops, I caught, the, I caught the pattern a little bit. All right, so we have the pattern piece cut out, okay? And then now I can go ahead and remove those pins. And what you should have is a fabric that is twice the width. Okay, so it's gonna be about five inches tall, little about five and a quarter by about 19 inches long, and that's gonna fit your average size head. When using a serger, it's really recommended if you aren't experienced to not use any pins near the serger. So what we're gonna use today are these wonder clips. They just clamp at one end, open up, and they'll grab onto the fabric and hold it in place so that it'll stay put for you before you serge it. So we'll just make sure these edges are lined up, just like that. And then you clamp them with the wonder clip. And you'll do that every few inches all the way down the side of your headband. Once you've put your wonder clips on, this is what it should look like. You should have already had instructions in class on the basic operations of your serger. If you haven't, make sure you do that before you begin. What you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be lining up the edge of your fabric with the round part of the presser foot. This will give you the quarter inch seam that you're wanting. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out my first clip and put it in the container that it goes with. I'm just gonna raise the front end of the presser foot up just a little bit, enough to grab the a hold of the fabric. With these knits, sometimes it's hard for the feed dogs to grab them. Then I just, I make sure that I'm starting with a nice long tail. 
I'll put my foot down on the foot pedal down below and slowly begin surging along the edge. It's gonna trim off just a tiny bit, but not much. What you wanna do is you're wanting to make sure the entire way that it's catching both the top and bottom layers. Those clips will help hold it in place, but if you think it might be getting off track, you can slow down at any point and just make sure you're catching both layers. The machine does all the work. I'm not pushing it through, I'm not pulling it through, I'm just guiding it along. We're just gonna go straight down this one side. When I get to this end, I did tug a little to match that end up. When I get to this end, I'm just gonna keep going. So I surge all the way through, and I just keep going, 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 and then I'm gonna use my shears here to trim the tail off, okay? So that is all we need to do with the serger right now. All right, so we have just surged down the edge of this fabric. Now all you need to do is flip it inside out, or right side out. And you just do that with your fingers. Okay. Then you're actually gonna take one end and flip it back over. So you'll get it all opened up, just like that. And then you take one end and you fold it in half. so that your open edges will line up. Okay, so what I'm looking for, I wanna line up the seam where I did that serging. I wanna line that up along one side and all the way around the opening at the top. I'm gonna to line those up. Then you can just kinda of shake it down like this. And I'll show you what that looks like up close. All right, I've got the tops lined up. So these are right sides together. As mentioned before, I brought the two seams together and it's just lined up all the way around the opening. I'm gonna take the Wonder Clips and clip a few spots on that opening. And then for this step, we're gonna use your regular sewing machine instead of the serger. For this part, you're going to turn your machine to a zigzag, which is a five. You wanna do that so that your machine is gonna stretch. I'm gonna increase my stitch length to a two. And what I need to do is lay my fabric down. Kind of, this is tricky getting it underneath the presser foot, but I'm just gonna stretch it out a little bit to get it under there. And then I want the raw or the edge of the fabric to line up with the edge of the presser foot. So I'm gonna lay that down like that, okay? What I need to do is I need to leave about a one inch opening or maybe one and a half inches um, in order to be able to turn this and flip it inside out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out my Wonder Clip. I'm gonna start stitching, and I am gonna go ahead and do a back stitch just to secure it. Then I'll stitch forward. Ooh. My clip hung up on the screw. I'm just gonna keep stitching keeping the edge of my fabric in line with the edge of the presser foot. Just careful not to get your fingers too close. Okay, so I'm just eyeballing it here. I wanna be about an inch, an inch and a half away from where I started. So I think I'm good right there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit reverse, back stitch, and then I'm gonna lift my needle, lift my presser foot, and pull this out. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little clip. And so we have just this small opening right here between where I stopped and started. And then that's what we'll use to flip the whole thing right side out. So on the outside, we should see all of the finished fabric, okay? So at this point, it is pretty much a headband, but we just need to finish off this one little area right here. So right here is that little opening I just turned the headband through. I'm gonna take a pin to hold it in place and what I've done is just tucked the raw edge down inside of there and notice how the bottom is still loose. I haven't pinned the whole thing together. All I did was pin this opening with the raw edge turned under and then I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna put it on a two, 
and I'm gonna increase my stitch length to about a four. I wanna do that so it still has a little bit of stretch, but we don't really wanna see a zigzag stitch right here. So all I need to do, I've got my needle centered. I just want to bring the fabric just past that center point so the needle is really, really close to the edge. I'm going to drop my needle. I'm gonna put in a couple of back stitches to reverse and stitch forward. And then I'm just securing just that little opening with a straight top stitch. So that secures it. I'm gonna reverse again. Okay. And then besides trimming up the loose threads, that is all I have to do to finish the headband. All right, what I've done here, since I've secured that end, I've just kind of shifted the seam. So that was where I surged. I've just shifted it to the middle. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this where that seam is just centered on the inside of the headband. So pretty much you're done if you like this rectangular shape. There's a few options for you if you wanna add embellishments. If you like the type of headband that has a spot on it that is more cinched in like that, then there's a few other options that you can choose from.